Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the conservation of momentum and we've looked at conservation of energy. And in most many cases, momentum is also conserved just as things like energy and mass and electrical charge are. So we're going to look at this and do several example problems looking at these concepts. So let's go ahead and get started here and let's talk about first of all conservation of momentum. And what does this mean? Well, in an isolated system, the momentum is always conserved. And that means that the net forces are always zero. When the net force is zero, the momentum is constant or the final momentum equals the initial momentum. So we can use this when we're looking at these types of systems. We can use the conservation of momentum to be able to determine the uh, what is what is happening and be able to determine things like velocities and how they have changed. So there are a couple types of collisions here that you could that can occur and where we can see momentum changing. So let's look at those examples or let's look at one of them here first. And that would be what we call an elastic collision. An elastic collision occurs when things hit perfectly and just bounce off bounce off each other. So it would be a perfectly elastic collision would be a perfect bounce right off and would move in then in the opposite an object may move in the opposite direction as you see here. So internal the kinetic energy is conserved in this type of collision meaning that the kinetic energy of the first object plus the kinetic energy of the second object this is before the collision must be equal to the the objects after the collision to the kinetic energies. So the kinetic energies are conserved, but also the momentum is conserved in both cases. So the mass times the velocity for each of the two objects before the collision is equal to the mass times the velocity after the collision. And note that the only thing changes is the velocities. You see the little primes there, little prime marks are meant to say that this is the velocity afterwards. So this is the initial velocity. This is the final velocity. And we see those in our image here that we have the mass moving with the velocity colliding into a second mass moving with some velocity. And afterwards, this one moves back with some velocity and this one moves forward with a different velocity than it did before. Note how the velocity is smaller here and much larger afterwards. So let's go ahead and look at an example of this. And what we see is we're going to calculate the velocities of objects after an elastic collision. So what do we know? Well, we can look at what we know here. We know the mass and the velocities, the masses, which of course do not change. So the masses before one is half a kilogram, one is 3.5 kilograms. We know that the initial velocities are four meters per second. And V2 in this case is zero. So we're not worried that velocity this was not moving in this case. And we know that V1 after the collision is negative three meters per second. Remember what a negative velocity is it means that this object after the collision is going to be moving in the left direction. That's what the negative sign means. As you recall, velocity is a vector. So it's so the, the sign tells us about the direction. So we have our diagram here. Let's go ahead and make a list of what we know and what we see here. So there's our diagram up at the top. And let's look at what we know in these cases. Well, we talked about this already. We know the masses. We know the uh, initial velocities. And we know one of the final velocities. So we know the final velocity of this. What we don't know, what, what are we looking for in this case? We're trying to look the velocities of v2 prime. That's what we're trying to find is what is this velocity after the collision. So we're going to be looking for this velocity. Remember that initially this was zero. So this was not moving. But we're going to look for what that velocity is after the collision. So let's go ahead and see what we need to know. Well, we know conservation of momentum. We're looking at the system 
here consisting of these two blocks moving on a frictionless surface. So that is our system. And there are no, nothing external. There are no net forces on the system. So therefore, momentum is conserved. And the mass times the velocity before is equal to the mass times the velocity afterwards. And we can then go ahead and rearrange this a little bit and solve this for the velocity. So here we have that the new velocity of the second object is equal to mass 1 times velocity 1 plus mass 2 times velocity 2. But wait, velocity 2 is 0. So this term is 0. We can ignore that minus m1 times v1 prime. Remember that this is after this is now afterwards divided by the second mass. So we know all of those numbers and we can put those into our equation here. And what we find is there they are and we can go ahead and calculate that and say that our final velocity is one meter per second. So it's positive meaning that it is moving in the right hand direction. That is how we defined the positive and negative for the velocities here. So we know that that is moving to the right. So that is an example with an elastic collision. But there are also collisions as you might expect if there are elastic collisions, there are also inelastic collisions. In this case, the kinetic energy is not conserved. And it also is quite possible that objects will stick together. So we see here an example with two objects colliding together, one with a positive velocity, one with a negative velocity. And the in final velocity, they may just come together and stop. So you can think of this as something that is a sticky substance, lumps of clay that will be much more inelastic and just stick together after the uh, collision. So a perfectly inelastic collision would be the one where they stick together. An inelastic collision, just some energy is lost. So there's this is an example of a perfectly inelastic collision where they stick together. And in this case, although it's not necessary, they happen to stop. But we can look at an example of this as we did with the elastic collision. And what we find is Let's look at our example here of the hockey player and catching the puck, stopping the puck. Well, this is an inelastic collision because they stick together, right? The goalie is then holding on to the puck, has stopped it, and they have stuck together. So this would be an example of an inelastic collision. And we're going to be looking for the recoil because if the, initially the hockey player was at rest, and the puck was not, but initially they were at rest. This was moving. Afterwards, the puck is going to impart some momentum to the player, and the player is going to move with some velocity. And that is the recoil velocity that we are looking at. We have the mass of the ho hockey goalie. We have the mass of the hockey puck. And we have the velocity at which the puck was traveling before. So we can now put together our information that we have. We have a diagram here and we have to look at what we know. So let's look at those. Here are some of our known quantities that we just talked about. And we know that the V1 prime equals V2 prime. What does that mean? Well, V1 is the motion of the puck afterwards. V2 is the motion of the goalie. Those are going to be the same. Remember, they're stuck together. So in this inelastic collision, they've stuck together and they are moving as one at the same speed. So we're just going to call that V prime. So we don't need the velocity of each of them afterwards because the velocities are exactly the same. So what we know, start off with our equation there. We know from conservation of momentum that M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime. And we have that the mass one then is if we simplify that based on what we knew up here with the velocities is that we can then say these velocities are the same and that m1 times v1 equals m1 plus m2 times v prime. Remember here, this is gone because v2 is zero. If this is zero, then that term is zero. So that goes away. 
So remember, when it says something starts at rest, in this case, it's not told that he that he or she is not moving, but who is the one who is at rest catches the hockey puck means that the initial velocity is zero. So we can then solve this for v prime, which is just related to v1, the initial velocity of the puck. We can put in our numbers that we know for the mass masses of the puck, the mass of the goalie, and the initial velocity of the puck, and find that our answer is 0 0.0748 meters per second. So we wouldn't expect it to be very large. The mass of the puck was very small. The amount of energy it could impart on the goalie is going to be very uh, not be a lot. And the goalie has a larger mass so is not going to move backwards near as fast as the puck was coming forward at 35 meters per second. But there still would be if we assume it's a frictionless ice surface, the goalie would move backwards a some amount. Now we can look at one more example of this using the same uh, same idea. And in this case, what we're going to look at is what is the kinetic energy loss? So we want to look at the kinetic energy considerations this time. How much kinetic energy was lost in the collision? Well, we still have our sketch. We have our known values here as we had before. And we know that kinetic energy uh, is equal to one half m2 v2 squared. So we can calculate what is the initial kinetic energy. That's the mass of the puck initially. There's the mass of the puck that's not going to change and the velocity of the puck before the collision, which was 35 meters per second squared. And we can then find what was the initial kinetic energy. Remember the goalie, he or she did not have a kinetic energy. They were not moving. So since that person was not moving, they had no kinetic energy before. So that initial kinetic energy of the goalie was 91.9 joules. Now we want to look at what the kinetic energy is afterwards. So kinetic energy prime meaning afterwards is one half the sum of the masses because now the masses are combined together times the square of that velocity. Well, we know all of those numbers already because we know the masses of the goalie, the mass of the puck, and we know the velocity of the goalie and puck after the collision. So we can then calculate the kinetic energy afterwards to be 0.196 joules. As you can see, that's quite different. 91.9 joules here, 0.196 joules here, quite a change in energy has occurred. And we can then subtract those if we want to find the actual difference, the change in kinetic energy, the amount of kinetic energy lost in the collision was 91.7 joules. So we went from 91.9 down to not 1.196. So 91.7 joules of kinetic energy were lost in this inelastic collision. So in the inelastic collision, there can be a big change and we can have that loss of kinetic energy. So let's go ahead and finish up here. We've looked at elastic and inelastic collisions, but let's go ahead and finish up with our summary. And what we looked at in this time, this section was that momentum is conserved in any isolated system. So within an isolated system, the momentum is always conserved. The internal kinetic energy will be conserved in an elastic collision, but not in an inelastic collision. And we saw that in our last example, where we could see how the kinetic energy had changed after the collision because it was inelastic. Some energy was lost. Where would that energy go? Again, we cannot just lose energy. It has to be converted to another form. Well, the puck slamming into the goalie's uh, mitt could heat it up a little bit and that could be where the energy goes. There could also be sound release that would be part of the energy released. So the energy does go somewhere. You can't just lose the energy, but the internal quid it will not be conserved. It will no longer be part of the kinetic energy or the energy of motion when we're looking at inelastic collisions. So that concludes this lecture on the conservation of momentum. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day, everyone.
and I will see you in class.